What's up everybody? My name's Kevin. The board game industry just keeps growing and growing, and thousands of new games are released every single year. But with that many new games coming out, gamers rarely get a break from the new and shiny. If you've got the money, it's likely that you constantly have an influx of new games. No chance to catch up, no chance to recover. Many of us have an ever-growing shelf of shame, or as some like to call it, the shelf of opportunity. I'm sure most of us wish we had more time in the day to play games, and wish it were easier to get groups together to play games, but people have lives with jobs, kids, and other responsibilities. See, if I were Bruce Wayne, I wouldn't become a crime-fighting vigilante. Nope. Instead, I'd offer to pay the bills of all my friends and family so that they could hang out in my mansion with me and play board games all day. I mean, that many board games would surely fill the void in my heart from losing both my parents in a back alley. Right? Sure, having more time would be great, but this video isn't about time management. Because even if I gave you a ton of advice on time management, and you managed to find more time to play games, there's no guarantee that your friends would have the time to play more games. Or that you even have any friends to play games with, because let's be honest, you might not have any friends. If board games are your main hobby, you're probably a bit weird. Maybe a bit of a nerd, somewhat socially awkward. And that's okay! We're all a bit weird. <laughs> you want weird? I'll give you weird. Weird, weird, weird. Fine. Weirder, weirder, weirder. Weird. What are we doing? I don't know, you started it. All right, so now we're at my game shelf, and as you can see, it's a little bit messy right now, but that's because I have too many games. Now, I've got games that I don't even want, and others I've got multiple copies of the same game. So here I've got two copies of the first edition of Barbarians, I have a prototype copy of the second edition, and my second edition upgrade kit is coming soon. That's a lot of barbarians. Why do I have so much? Well, because it's a great game. Why would you want to play a Euro game about farming when you could build a barbarian army and conquer neighboring territories? I mean, obviously. But this is what we call clutter. So let's do something about it. Alright, I know that probably gave a lot of you some serious anxiety, so let me bring you some relief. This is what we call clutter, so let's do something about it. Also, I should probably mention that when I got my copy of Barbarians, uh, there was this dent in the box, you see that? Yeah, and so I reached out to Tabula. It's a tiny little den, but I reached out and they sent me a brand new box. All right, let's get serious. If your collection keeps growing and growing, although I wouldn't recommend it, you could always just buy another game shelf. However, if that's not an option for you or you just don't wanna do that, luckily, there are a few things you can do to help trim down your collection. The first thing you can do is both the easiest and the hardest. Go through your game collection and look at every single game and think about the games that you never really play. Then consider whether or not you think you'll actually play them again in the future. And if the answer is no, maybe you could get rid of them. For some games, it might be an easy decision, but for others, it might be incredibly difficult. After you've set aside all the games you plan on getting rid of, now comes the real hard part, actually getting rid of them. You could donate games to a church or school or library or drop them off at a local thrift store. Or if they're really terrible games, you can just throw them out. Now if a game still has value, you might want to sell it. And you generally have two options. You could sell locally or you could sell online. 
Selling locally can be kind of a challenge because you need to live in an area that has a good gaming community. And a lot of the time, game groups will have exchange days where you can get together and buy, sell, or trade used games. Selling online is tricky because of the cost of shipping. If you're like me and spent $40 on a game like this, if you wanted to go back and sell it later, shipping a game of this size could cost you $15, maybe even $20. And most people buying this game used probably don't want to spend more than $25 or $30 total. So after shipping, you're making $10 for a game that cost you $40. And that kind of hurts. I mean, why did they have to make this box so big? What's in here? Just a few hundred cards and some player boards. Why couldn't they have shrunk it down? In fact, that would be nice too, because it'd be much cheaper to ship. However, if they did shrink it down, they probably couldn't charge $40 for it. So let's talk about that next, making our games smaller. I'm sure most of you have opened up a box and been shocked at how few components actually come in it. In fact, the game that I see getting flack for this more than any other game is Splendor. It only includes about 90 cards, a few tiles, and a handful of poker chips. But if you look at the size of the box without the insert, you can fit like six copies of the game inside. In fact, I remember seeing this post from Derek Funkhauser back in 2017 about a ridiculous amount of dead space in game boxes where he called out Splendor and Tack. Well, well, well. How the turntables... Let's just have a look at this game right here. Great game, by the way, designed by Derek and Lizzie Funkhauser. Let's open it up and see what we've got in here. Oh, a nice rule book. And, uh, oh, wait, what? Shouldn't there be more in here? You see these two games? They both have exactly the same number of components. Actually, that's not true. The mind has two more cards. That's right. There's actually more components in this game than this one. Now, of course, I can poke fun at Derek for all the dead space in this game box, but I'm pretty sure he wasn't the one who actually decided to make the box this large. In case y'all didn't know, that's generally a decision made by the publisher. But if you're not aware, the reason a publisher might choose to go for a larger box is because it has more shelf presence when sitting in a game store. Because the cover of this box is almost six times larger than the mind, you're about six times more likely to see it. Having shelf presence in a store is really important if you want to sell lots of copies. So it's actually good business practice to print larger boxes, but it can create problems for all of us with limited shelf space. So what kind of advice do I have for maximizing shelf space? Well, if you've got any games like this, you could buy a good sized deck box and just keep all of it in there. Or if you're brave enough, you could take the box, cut it apart and create a smaller box that is the correct size for the game. Let's do that, shall we? And there we have it, a nice tiny box for The Walking Dead, Something to Fear. And assuming I measured everything correctly, which it looks like I did, it is the perfect size. So the entire contents of this box are now in here. That's a huge amount of space that I'm saving on my shelves. Now, unfortunately, the resale value of this just dropped tremendously, but it's good I don't plan on selling this copy. And of course, there's also the issue of shrinking the rule book, but I'll figure something out. Another thing you can do is get one of these. It's made for storing and organizing photographs, and it comes with 16 different cases, which means you can fill it with 16 small box games. And some games like The Walking Dead, Something to Fear, will actually fit inside these cases. What's so great about it is that you now have a carrying case full of 16 games that you can take around with you easily, and 
it clears off a whole bunch of shelf space for other games. Also, if you thought I was actually going to use this, I'm sorry, I, I can't help you. So, what's something else we can do to save on space? Well, for one, if you can, ditch the expansion boxes and squeeze everything into the core box. Or take multiple versions of the same game and squeeze them into the same box. I have three different versions of code names in this one box. Now, that's not always possible, and sometimes it is possible, but you have to also ditch the insert from the core box, and if it's a nice insert, that's not always something you'll want to do. Sometimes, cutting out the clutter can be a difficult and daunting task, depending on the size of your collection. The best advice I could give you, first and foremost, is to go through your collection and get rid of the games that you don't actually play. Now, some of them might actually be fun, but if they're never hitting the table, why are they taking up space on your shelves? Your shelves will have much more breathing room after you've gotten rid of those games. And it'll be hard not to fill up that space immediately afterwards, but have some restraint and try to focus on just the good games that you own for a while. Think of it like a deck building game. You begin with a starter deck of a small number of mediocre cards. Over the course of the game, you'll acquire much better cards, strengthening your deck. Then, if you can begin to remove your starting cards from your deck, you'll make your deck even stronger. That's all I'm suggesting. Just remove the games that would be comparable to your starting cards. So yes, most of this video is me telling you to get rid of games. And sometimes that can be painful. But I think you'll be much happier with your overall collection if you do. That's all I've got for you. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. Huge thank you to MVM for hosting this video. If you enjoy this type of content, please consider checking out Old Man Games on Patreon. My name is Kevin Grote. I want to thank you so much for watching. Let the purge begin. Mm-hmm. <laughs>